All right, good afternoon traders and welcome to the uh, uh, special event here with uh, Patrick Wayland. Uh, Patrick's a uh, uh, new bookmap user or uh, presenter with us, uh, so uh, excited to have him on here. Uh, and uh, he's going to go through uh, how he uh, reads the order flow uh, for his uh, his futures trading. Uh, so Patrick's, uh, he's 34 years old. He, he's living in Hawaii, surfing big waves and also riding the waves in the stock market on YouTube. Uh, he has been day trading for six years, documenting his journey through the markets uh, daily on his YouTube channel. Uh, here is his YouTube channel. I'll be putting this as well as special offers uh, from Patrick uh, for Bookmap uh, into the chat in YouTube, also over in our Discord channel so that uh, you guys don't have to copy it down or anything like that. Um, let's go through the disclosures uh, and then uh, we'll turn it right over to Patrick. Uh, general disclosure, all book map limited materials, information and presentations are for educational purposes only. General disclosure uh, and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. The risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, so Patrick, let us let me get your screen up and then we are ready to go. Yeah, we're all set. And we can't hear you. Hold on a minute here. <laughs> we yeah, heard you. Yeah, before. Good. Hey, hey, there you are. Okay. All right. All right, we're live. What's going on, guys? So the big focus for me with recently I started using Bookmap is because I just wanted to be able to visualize where the liquidity is in the market. As Bruce said, I am a surfer. I live in Hawaii. I like to think that the market is a lot like the ocean. The market moves in waves. Stocks move in waves. And then obviously we, we don't want to be entering that wave at the top. We want to be, you know, at the bottom of those waves. And, you know, if we're shorting, vice versa, we want to be selling high, buying low, not the opposite. We don't want to be buying high and selling low. So for me, the big focus for Bookmap is I really don't get that crazy. I know Bookmap has like a million, you know, different ways to display information and different indicators and all that. But for me, I like to keep it very simple. I want to just be able to see where that liquidity is. So this is pretty much what I have going on on my book map right now. My big focus, number one, is where the VWAP is. I tell everyone that if I had to pick one indicator in the entire world, it would be the VWAP. Because I believe that, at least for futures, that the VWAP is almost like a magnet. When we get these moves up, it's like, okay, I'm expecting a move up and we're going to test that VWAP level. Right now, we're kind of at a weird spot. We got Powell speaking in a little bit. So the market kind of bounced off those lows. But what I really like to focus on is, again, you know, just keeping it very simple and seeing where these areas of liquidity are. Like right earlier this morning, you can see we had a lot of support at this 3,700 area. I mean, we were just basically chopping around 3,700 multiple times, bouncing off that 3,700 level. And it was really just holding that support level. So as a trader, I'm basically looking, okay, if I want to get long, I'm okay to get long seeing that we have all that, all that liquidity down at that 3,700 level. But if let's say I want to get short, where would be my short entry? My short entry is going to obviously be below that 3,700 level, which I ended up getting a short making over $2,000 here on this trade alone, just from the idea of knowing that all that liquidity is there. And I can see it's all been sitting there. It's all been printing, printing, you know, we had pushes down there, we popped back up, we had some large areas of, you know, selling pressure, you can see the bubbles there, showing us where all that selling pressure is. If we zoom in, we can kind of see we we barely got down there, we got down to this level, we kind of pushed back up. And at that point, I'm like, okay, all I need to do is just wait for that 3700 level to be gone. And then I can get short into my stop loss. If I enter for this break to the downside, you know, you can see right here, I'm entering for that break below 3700. And then my stop's going to be 3700. And it's that simple for me as a futures trader. The nice thing about trading futures is obviously I can go short, long, don't have to locate anything like that. So really, once I see that liquidity is gone there, 
we break through that liquidity, we get all the selling pressure. We have a volume spike. We have everything coming up telling me that we're going to break through that level. I'm off to the races in terms of getting a move from the 3700s. We moved all the way down here to 90s there. We pushed back up. So on this move, I can basically enter with three contracts and then I'm going to put my one, um, you know, my stop loss there at 3700. I'm looking for my target. Normally my targets around 10 handles on that first leg down. So I can take a little bit off right there. We can see we had some liquidity coming back in the markets at that 90 level. One thing about these whole numbers, I don't know why it is. I've, I've always heard this from traders around the world, yeah, experienced traders. There's something about those whole numbers, you know, 100, 90, 80, pretty much whole numbers always end up kind of acting as support mentally because people are kind of like, they're looking like, do I want to buy at 91 or would I rather buy at 90? So that's what's interesting is you'll see a lot of times these liquidity areas, these big areas of liquidity will end up kind of at these whole whole number areas. Like this one right here is at 85. So they're always they're like kind of like sitting at these levels. And we can see that 3,700 right there was pretty clear resistance once we push back up. So this gives me confidence. I actually talked about it in a video today is the greatest thing about Bookmap being able to see all this liquidity is it gives me confidence that if I get short at 3,700, we pull down here to 30, 30, uh, down to 36.88 there. If we pull down there and I can see that there's all that liquidity stacking up still at that 3,700 level, we went from turning that area of support into resistance, right? So we're seeing that resistance there and I can go, okay, you know, where I can stay in this trade. I can keep my stop loss at that 3,700 level because I know that earlier that was a lot of liquidity as support and now it's a lot of liquidity as resistance. And you can see we ended up moving all the way down here to the 80s on this move down. And again, guess what? We had that support right there at the 85, showing that liquidity. And you know, what's the nice thing about Bookmap too that I really enjoy is obviously like I can look at my, my direct order matrix, I can look at my order book, my level two, but it's different because I'm getting this illustration. It's really illustrating kind of where that liquidity is. I'm not just seeing numbers on a chart. I'm seeing this heat map and the heat map's really giving me like an overall visual representation of where those buyers and sellers are. And what's interesting, what's interesting is we broke through that level there at the 85s. We moved all the way down here to I think what, like 75s down there. So you can see we had a liquidity there at the 80s. Again, that whole number, you know, 85, 80s. And then we got down here down to the 75s. So on futures, again, like I said, like those whole numbers always kind of end up being support. You can see there's a lot of liquidity down there right now, the 650s. The thing is, I tell people, at the end of the day, like we don't know for sure if these areas of liquidity are buyers that are, you know, shorts trying to get covered. Are they longs trying to get long at those levels? We don't know for sure. But what we do know is that there's people that are trying to interact with the market at those levels. And the market, again, it moves in waves, right? The market's constantly moving in these waves. You get to move up, you get to move down, move up, move down. The market's not gonna simply just go from here to here. It's gonna kind of go up, it's gonna go down, it's gonna kind of wiggle its way down there. And what's interesting is look at that once again. You know, if you were, sh let's say you're short from the 700s, you got that move down, and you start to see that there's a lot of liquidity coming in at these levels, at these 75 to 80 level, now you're like, okay, I can get long down here because I can see liquidity is coming in there. There's buyers coming in at this level. I think a lot of that on this move down is probably shorts trying to get covered. And then it's an idea of like a short squeeze because now we get buyers coming in, buyers coming in. You can see you got spike in volume. You got a lot of buyers interacting with the price there. We push up and guess where we turn down again at? That 3,700 level. Once again, that 3,700 level acting as resistance. You can see the price pushed right up to that level. It tried to get through there for a second, try to get through that level, that liquidity there at the 3,700, and guess what? It didn't get through there. So it got denied right there at that level, and that's something to obviously, you know, we want to focus on is knowing that we already knew that 3,700 level was earlier acting as resistance. So if I'm trying to get long off this bottom at the 70s, where's my target? You know, my target's going to be at that previous area of resistance, previous area of support, depending on if you're long or short. So it's really just for me, it's visualizing, you know, I'm a, I feel like I'm a very visual person. I like to be able to see kind of where these areas are ver versus just being able to look on the chart or seeing 
you know, on the direct order matrix on my level two, I can see all these orders on level two, but all I see is numbers. I don't see kind of when the, when the market's moving down to these levels, does it push up? Does it push back? Are we getting a lot of liquidity coming in there? Are people buy, buy, buy? Or is there a lot of volume? You can see like right here on this bubble, that's an aggregated bubble, you know, 2,400 volume coming in there, buying that bottom. But if I'm only looking at the level two, you know, I don't know after looking at that, after that happens, after those orders go through there, that information is no longer on level two. It just is only there when those orders are there. Once those orders get filled, I'm not gonna be able to see that. Also, I really like over here on the side, we have the SVP, the session range volume profile. This again, can really act as support and resistance. These levels of volume profile, a lot of people are trading volume profile these days. They think, you know, at the end of the day, you basically get these little gaps in the volume profile where you can see we had a lot of volume traded up here at the 700 to 710 level, a lot of volume traded up there. So what that's, that's telling me is that there's a lot of action in this level. So if we push off a level that we don't have a lot of action at, well, there's a pretty good chance we're gonna kind of push back up to where all that volume was traded at earlier in the day. And that's kind of pretty much what happened here when we bounced off the 70s, we got volume there, we push up. You can see it's almost like little little peaks, little mountains, but we have that huge mountain of volume at that 700 level. So that's telling me there's probably a lot of shorts that were sitting there piling in at that 700 is trying to get this to move down. And then when we move down, we start to get these little peaks of a volume as well. But pretty much like if I see a huge spike in volume on this, on the uh, volume profile over here, and we break below that, and we don't see there's much going on below, well, then I feel a lot more confident to hold that trade longer. And that's exactly what I did earlier. Uh, you can see the video on my YouTube later on today, but I basically shorted that 700 level knowing that there really wasn't much going on down there. When it was happening, I showed the book map and the trade as well. So I'm basically looking for confirmation when we get these moves down. Are we getting a lot of volume? Are we getting a lot of buyers and sellers? I also kind of keep this chart as like clean as possible because I really just want to be able to see where the majority of that liquidity is sitting at. And right now, again, we can see, you know, this 3,700 level, there's a lot of liquidity. I mean, that dark red right there, that's a massive amount of liquidity. And then we have, you know, down here at the 70s. So there's not much going on in terms of like massive amount of liquidity in, in these levels right now. So we zoom in a little bit more, we can see, you know, this is really starting to stack up. A lot of sellers just kind of sitting there trying to push this back down. And I also really like to kind of focus on if the price moves up, if we push through 700 level, do we get liquidity coming into the bottom? Are we getting this liquidity pushing back up as we're going? So you can see, you know, if we zoom out, go back to earlier's move, as we're moving up, is that liquidity following us, pushing us back up? Or are we just kind of getting a fake out and then we just get that drop? Like right here, you can see we pushed up, but not much was going on in terms of orders coming in to sit on that book. Like there weren't people really trying to push this up. There were, you know, if we, if we would have broke through 700, we would have seen that there would be liquidity that was exchanged right here sitting on the book, you know, people having those orders there. But instead, we see that we kind of pushed up, liquidity was sitting up here, it wasn't below the price. So that's telling me that there's that resistance there or that overall volume profile. And again, you know, I'm trading futures, so the volume's a little bit different. You know, you're not getting millions of shares traded. You're getting, you know, sometimes on these, you know, volumes 34, that volume there, you have 437. But the thing is, when do we see that there's a lot of volume? If I see there's a huge spike in volume, I see a big aggregate of volume, well, that's normally telling me that that's kind of like the way the market's gonna move at that point. So these smaller little bubbles are kind of like just noise, but then these bigger bubbles that I'm seeing here, I'm like, okay, you know, we got 758 aggregated volume right there at that level when we push down. So that's gonna kind of push us back down. We can see that there was some liquidity coming in there at the 90s right there. So, and again, now we're kind of going sideways. We have Powell speaking at two. So I think there might be some sideways action. I was kind of worried about that, that we're gonna be streaming at 1, 1 p.m. right now because he's supposed to talk at two. So it was a pretty good chance we kind of just go sideways here. But again, you know, look, we got all this resistance sitting there at the 700s. So let's see what kind of happens here. Well, I think, like I said, we kind of just might get that sideways action. But again, you know, we don't have a lot of liquidity to the downside here. We got a lot more liquidity up here. So I'm really kind of thinking that, you know, the market's wanting to kind of push up to this liquidity, which it did. 
It's kind of pulling back down here to see what's going to happen. Are there going to be buyers sitting down here? Are there going to be people trying to support this price? You can see right now, there's some orders coming in there. People are trying to prop this up at the 90s. You got 90, 91s, 92s there. And then there's not much going on in between there. So kind of interesting, you know, when we really focus that. If we zoom out, you know, if we, I guess, increase the heat map here, we can see that there's, you know, there's obviously orders sitting there. But if we really kind of decrease that, we can see that the majority of that is kind of down here. But again, you can see like that buyer that was sitting here, he just moved down. What's interesting is now look at the price moving up here. So the market's kind of like just constantly kind of bouncing from these levels, pushing up here. So I would expect now that we're going to kind of just sit in this level. We got about uh, 45 minutes until Powell speaks. So we might just kind of sit here and go sideways in the market right now. We had to push back up going into that news. And here we go, trying to push up to that 700 level again. Getting some volume. That's 400 volume right there traded. Trying to push up into this level. That 700 acting as resistance. So the cool thing about this as well is like if I'm looking at a candlestick chart, all I'm seeing is candlesticks, right? Like I don't know exactly kind of like where those orders that people were sitting on the book. Like I saw like I can see now, you know, in hindsight, in the just looking at the history of this on the heat map, I can see that there were buyers sitting there at the 90s. I can see there was buyers coming there at 93s. So I'm kind of confident that there's some support kind of down here in this level. So if I want to be buying the dip, you know, I can feel confident going over to the candlestick chart and then like, okay, you know, this is what's kind of going on over just not looking at a candlestick chart and not really having an idea if those buyers were kind of pulling their orders or they putting their orders up there. Right now, looking, I don't want to predict this, but it's looking like it wants to keep trying to eat out the 700 level. And if we zoom out on the bigger picture, where would be like a level after that? If we're just looking at the book map here, keep zooming out. You know, I would say the VWAP would be a target. We, if we get above 700 here, well, you got the VWAP up at the 7, 713 level right there. So that would obviously kind of lead us up to that level above 700, up to the VWAP. Test that VWAP. To be honest, if I was kind of play this, like if I, if I knew Powell wasn't speaking later on today, I would say that, you know, I would look for a push up to that VWAP and then look for a short off of that VWAP level, knowing that the market kind of has a magnet to that VWAP. And that's kind of my big, big focus here is really just kind of seeing, seeing where all that action is. So yeah, like really these levels that we're looking at, someone's asking them on the YouTube chat right now, you know, these levels that we're looking at, we're showing that liquidity, where the buyers and sellers are. Not so much that we're seeing exactly, like we don't know for sure, like right now, you know, that 700 level, it can get taken out 100%. We don't know for sure it's going to hold as resistance, but we know that there's a lot of people sitting right there, a lot of volume sitting at that 700 level there, but really not, not a ton of volume. Only about 110 orders there at a seven, what is that? It's about, about 300, 400 orders sitting at that 700 level there, kind of 700 to 71. But look at that right now. The buyers are coming in here trying to push this back up. And look how tight that's getting. You can see they're basically just going back and forth, battling right here, trying to get this price to move up there. We got the VWAP at the 15s there. So really just kind of in that middle, like I said, we're going into that PAL speaking at 2 p.m. So this could just kind of go sideways until that happens. I normally don't try to trade going up into a you know economic event or some some type of news or a press conference we're gonna you know the best best plan now would be just to kind of wait until spout until powell speaks and then we would kind of see which way the market's going to move and you can see we're just kind of kind of kind of going sideways there we're still getting a little bit of volume some volume coming in there yeah you got your guys at 95 but... there uh they just kind of showed up in the book yeah, yeah, right there. Big buyer at 95 now. So obviously if you're long right now, if you're still long off that bottom at the 60s, then you're sitting there right now. You're feeling good seeing that there's, you know, buyers coming in here, pushing this back up, trying to hold right there. And again, that's that's really my big focus is having that confirmation during the trade. You know, if I'm shorting 
and I want the market to go down, and I see that the buyers keep kind of disappearing, that they're kind of pulling their orders, they're putting their orders on there, taking it away, then I feel better. But right now, I mean, this really looks like it wants to push through the 700s. But will the sellers be able to hold this down? That's always the question here. But again, I think you really have to think about this is we don't know for sure if these are shorts that are sitting there or these, you know, longs that are trying to get just take their profit up at these levels. We just know that there's action at these levels. There's, you know, market participants sitting there at there. I'm so I'm using the rhythmic data as well and you can actually set it up so that you can see the stop stop loss orders that are coming through when those get get activated, which is kind of cool. Sometimes you'll see these stop runs where the market just kind of breaks right through certain levels. And you'll see on the book map, it'll show you like how many stop orders were taken out there. And again, you can see they're, they're adding liquidity up there at the top on the 700s, but not really much going on down here in the 90s right now. So a lot of just pressure at that 700 level. So that's really just giving you confidence. If you're trying to short off the 700 level, keep seeing that every time we push up there, we get more and more selling pressure, more and more people adding sell orders onto the book there. Well, then you feel a lot more confident to hold your short. Right now, we're starting to break below an EMA as well. So see if this pulls back 93s now, I would say kind of pull back 93s here. But again, you know, zooming out, we can see kind of from here, from the 700 level, I mean, there's not much going on below us. I mean, there's no... There's just nothing really, I mean, there we can see on this, but I would say even there, it's just not much from the 80s to the 85s, not much going on there. Got a little bit of support here at the 90s right now, but obviously the majority of that volume, the majority of that liquidity is sitting at that 700 level right now. And look at that, the market's kind of just pulling back from that. We had that area of liquidity that we saw at the 95s. We saw that order popping up there, like Bruce said, and well... It got taken out, and nobody else is trying to get in there on that action right now. I think the big thing, again, is just really, you know, you can go like this, and you can have a heat map. But the problem is on futures, you're always going to have kind of the order book kind of adjusting and holding these levels. There's always going to be kind of liquidity on the order book. So I really just want to focus on where that major, you know, where the larger orders are. Where is that big big amount of liquidity sitting there not just like oh you know there's always going to be kind of liquidity on futures but if i'm taking away a lot of that noise now i can see pretty clearly you know 700 is the the mac daddy of liquidity right now there and then down down below i mean we've got what 73 you know we got some stuff right here at the 90s but i would basically if i was trading this right now if i was going to trade this short i'd be looking for I'll see that right there. We just added more selling pressure there at 97. So this should start to kind of move down if these sellers continue to be aggressive here. It's interesting. I mean, if I was a seller, I'm not sure I'd want to be sitting at 97 right now, knowing that, that all that liquidity there, but I guess they're trying to get filled. And there, that order just popped up at 91s, showing us buyers sitting there right now. Just kind of moving through this channel. Like I said, there's about 35 minutes until Powell speaks, so there's a pretty good chance that we just kind of go sideways here. I was hoping that we get a little bit more action to kind of really be able to see what's going on with Bookmap. But when the market's really volatile, if the market's really making big moves up and down, it's really a lot easier to see, kind of get an idea of where your targets, where your overall plans are in terms of you know, if the market's really like, if we got through 700, we would start to see like, okay, that next level of liquidity would probably be at the VWAP. And we can be like, okay, we can hold this and we can kind of ride this wave. And we're just going to constantly be riding these waves, you know, up, down, up, down, trading futures at least, you know, for me personally, I really, I don't care if the market goes up. I don't care if the market goes down. I just don't want the market to go sideways. You know, I can short, I can go long, but the problem is if the market's going sideways, I don't really have an advantage. Because I don't know for sure, you know, are we going to just chop around here? And I think that's a really good, if you're trading futures, if the market's going sideways, like if this is the what's going on, if we're just going sideways in, this, in between these levels, 
there's no trade there. You know, trying to trade three or four handles in these little ranges, it's just not going to work out. You know, we're looking for bigger moves. We want to see, you know, these levels of liquidity getting taken out, and then we get that move down to the next level of liquidity. Right now, we're selling down. We got a little bit of liquidity just got taken out there. 91. It's always interesting, too, to see when people put their liquidity on the book and then they take it away. So that's telling me, like, hey, you know, if there's people sitting there at the 93s to take it away, take away their orders at the 90s, well, they might move down. They might just wait for the next trade. You know, maybe they got filled. You can see that right there, that volume 574 traded there on that aggregate of volume traded. So obviously sellers took over there and we broke through that area, that 90. Remember earlier we had that big area of liquidity, the 95s, that's obviously gone. And now we're sitting down here at 91s. If you're looking at the candlesticks right now, you know, on the five minute chart, you can see we're breaking below the candles. You know, I can add candles on here. And I can see these candles kind of give me a visual of what those candles are doing, how they're looking. And I mean, right now we're just kind of, kind of just sitting here chopping around. So again, you know, I really don't think there's a good trade until after Powell speaks either way, but it's kind of seeing, it's very interesting to kind of get a different outlook, a different view on kind of what's going on um, with all that. So for me, like I said, it's very simple. Just got the uh, bid ask on there, the buy sell orders, and then the heat map, the last price over there on the right, and uh, VWAP on there. So so that's kind of my big focus. But again, we know that 700 level acting as resistance. We can see on the uh, on the sessions on the range volume profile over there on the right. This is actually a really good tool. Even if you weren't going to use the heat map, you know, just having that volume profile again gives you an advantage to be able to see, like, hey, look, look what's happening right now. We had a bunch of volume traded at the 95s, and guess what? We're below there. So, you know. Based on volume profile alone, we should get a move down here to the 87s, 85s next. And you can see right now, we got some buyers sitting there at the 85s. Market's moving down here. We're kind of right in the middle between those two peaks on the volume profile. And I would say that there's a pretty good chance that we get down here 87s, 85s next. And I saw somebody ask in the chat about the movement right now because of Powell. Yeah, I 100% would say, you know, on a normal day, we probably wouldn't be going sideways like this. But because Powell is speaking at two, it's just probably, you know, just kind of everyone sitting on their hands waiting. Me, I gotta think the best way to I really think you think about your, uh, you think about trading trader mentality is how do you feel right now? Or would you place a trade right now? If I don't feel confident in taking a trade right now, then I'm probably you know, not going to take a trade. So if I'm not going to take a trade, will other traders, will other traders take a trade? Probably not. So that's like a good way to think about like emotion. If you're feeling like you're not confident that there's a good trade here, I'd say the majority of other traders are probably feeling the same way because everybody knows, okay, if Powell's going to speak at two, there's going to be a better move to happen after that. So, you know, really, is there a reason for me to trade this right now? And you can see we got down there to the to this level of liquidity there through that 87s, 88s getting touched. And now we're just kind of going sideways on this level. But that 85 kind of looking like it wants to get taken out here. Will the sellers be able to get it? After the 85s, we got the 80s coming up. 86s there, touching, touching, touching. On the five minute chart, if you're looking at the candlesticks right now, we just broke. Below, below that kind of push back up, that little trend that was holding there at the 95, 94 level. I think there's a pretty good chance that we kind of move down to the 75s here if we can continue to make that move. But again, knowing that Powell is speaking here in a little bit, we could just kind of chop around here. And you can see right now the seller is trying to come in there, trying to hold this down, 88s. This is looking really good. Again, you can see how that liquidity went from being on the bottom there at the 85s. And now all that liquidity is sitting there at the 87s. So that changed, you know, the game there. So we went from having that support below us, and so now we have all this liquidity above us. And we move down there to the uh, 82s next. After that, we got the 80s, that whole dollar area. 
Market's kind of pushing back up. That liquidity that was added there at the 85s, getting taken out there. I think really the best you know way to think about this is to kind of think about the market just kind of searching for liquidity. The market is not going to go straight down. It's not going to go straight up. It really needs to kind of find buyers and sellers. You know, I think that a good a good saying about trading is that you know sellers want to sell high, and buyers want to buy low. They don't just want to just because the market's sitting at a certain level doesn't mean that oh I I want to buy here. Well, if I'm a buyer, I probably want to look. I want to be looking for an opportunity to get in at the best price. I don't just want to buy just because the market's at 87. You know, I'm looking to be like, oh, I'd rather buy down here. If I'm a buyer, I want to be buying at 75s. If I'm a seller, well, I want to be selling at 700s because I can see, you know, where that liquidity is. I can see we got that resistance. And again, kind of just getting this little bit of sideways action here going into. I didn't even know that I didn't know that Powell was speaking today. I guess that was not on the economic calendar that I normally look at, but I guess he is. So right now that liquidity at the 90s sitting there heavy. And guess what? Remember we talked about that 95 level, that peak in the volume profile? Well, look where we're at now. It's not a coincidence, right? Like it's not a coincidence that we went from 95 to 86. And look, we're kind of bouncing at this 86s right now. That's that volume profile from that session. And it's given us a pretty good idea that if we break below 95, well, then that next area would be 85. And then from here, you know, 80 would be your next little area of liquidity. And then after 80, there's not much going on. So, I mean, it's off to the races after 80. I'm thinking that if Powell comes out and he just, let's say Powell comes out and pretty much just keeps the same exact stance that he's had, we might, we might go. We might go to the 65s a day. Maybe seven, maybe, maybe seven, 70, 65 level. And even who knows after that. I mean, the market's down 2.3% right now. We still got we still got room to go to the downside. You know, if we were sitting at 4% right now on the downside, I would be a little skeptical that we could go lower, but knowing that we're at 2%. There's always a possibility of still going lower. It's funny because earlier we were down like 1.5%. And, you know, we were like, oh, market is going to go lower than that. And it just kept going lower and lower. Right now, sitting here, 87s. You can see we, again, we were kind of just chopping around, bouncing off this volume profile over there on the right. And just kind of watching here. I'd be interested to see if we can break through the 80s, 60s here and go down to the 80s before Powell speaks. Looking like a bear flag on the three-minute chart right now. Also, a lot of times too, like if I'm in a, let's say I'm, let's say the market's really volatile and let's say I'm just kind of getting in and out quickly. I'm also kind of looking at these indicators up top here with the order book. Right now, you can see that there's an imbalance. There's more sellers than buyers. Does that always mean the market's going to go down? No, but you know, if I'm trying to buy, if I want to get long, and I see that there's a lot more buyers trying to trying to get in there, well, that's going to obviously give me more confidence in the trade. And um, yeah, kind of. A, you can also adjust the colors, the brightness there as well. I didn't even really think about that, but yeah, it's kind of cool. You can adjust some brightness there. Like I said, I've only been using Bookmap now for about two months, a little under two months, maybe less than that actually, maybe about a month. And I've really seen a difference in my overall confidence in holding my trades longer. And then also, you know, being able to see kind of what's going on with the market, being able to see that liquidity definitely gives you, you know, more confidence knowing that like right now, you know, if I'm short on this and there's all that liquidity at the 92s, well, I can basically put my stop. Like, I'll sh you guys can watch the video later on my YouTube channel. But what I'll do is if I'm in a trade, a lot of times, I'll kind of move my stop loss to right above these areas of liquidity. Which, again, you know, gives me just kind of an overall better picture of what's going on. And I would say this is not typical price action right now. This is not the typical... Price action. We're kind of just going sideways here because of Powell speaking at two, but 
You can see we're just kind of going sideways there. There's orders coming through, but kind of a battle just right now to keep this price where it's at. People aren't getting too aggressive yet. We haven't had that news yet. But I don't think I don't think Powell's going to say anything that's going to really move the market. Um, at least move the market back to to the highs of day or something like that. I'm thinking he's going to come out pretty much just saying that hey, you know, we're uh, we're confident we're going to keep keep this going the way we're doing and we're going to have to keep increasing interest rates and keep all that going. Right now, 87 is trying to hold up there. And again, that's right there at that volume profile over here on the right. Kind of holding there, 87s. We got all that liquidity up there at the 700s sitting there. And 92 is right now sitting there as well. And the nice thing, the nice thing about the book map too is it's really simple and easy. You know, you can zoom in, really get that. If you wanted to get crazy and you wanted to zoom in and look at every little order coming through, you can easily just zoom out. I have it on, you know, on my on my mouse. I would say that the overall platform is pretty intuitive when it comes to just the user interface. I've been impressed with that. And again, I'm using the rhythmic data through my broker. Um, it's basically just free. If you already have rhythmic data on your futures broker, you can then use it through the book map here. But if we go and we zoom out, we look at the overall kind of day so far, you know, that 700 liquidity was just massive in terms of buyers, buyers, buyers. We got through there, we got down here to the 70s, and guess what? We pushed right back up there to the 700s. So, um, Patrick, how many, how many, um, uh, trades uh, do you take per day, more or less? Oh, to be honest, it really just depends on the the market. You know, if the market's hot and we're getting some really good opportunities to trade, then you know I'll take I'll take maybe 10, 20 trades. It just depends, to be honest. Um, then some days, you know, when the market's chopping, it's just kind of going sideways. Those are going to be the kind of sit on your hands and wait for wait for a better opportunity. This morning, you know, we had a good move out of open, and then we just sat there at the 700 level for quite some time. So I think it was like almost an hour. I was like, yeah, from, um, boom, 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 boom. yeah. Oh, 700 is up here. So, I mean, we are pretty much sitting at that 700 level since uh, 10 o'clock, 9.45. And then we finally got that breakthrough by almost 12. So two hours was going sideways there. Definitely makes it difficult to... Uh, Take a trade when we're going sideways. That's the funny thing about trading is like if the market's hot and the market's good and you got good setups, you know, you're, you're getting volatility, like you can make a ton of money, you know, in five minutes and 10 minutes when the market's moving, the market's giving you setups. But if the market's going sideways for hours, I mean, you can either just sit there and get chopped up and lose money. You can try to force trades and end up just taking unneeded risk. I would say a choppy market is the hardest market to trade in. And it's funny because some people, you know, they're like, oh, I love when the market's in a range. But personally, for me, I'm more of a breakout trader, more of a momentum trader. So I want to be in that momentum when the market's moving. And if the market's not moving, well, we're not getting any momentum. And, it's and I also took a trade this, uh, or just earlier off of this level when we had all this kind of coming back in because of the book map showing me like, hey, look, there's all this support down here. All these buyers trying to get in here for a reason. So all that kind of gives me confidence. Like, okay, I'm going to be okay if I get in here, put my stop below those orders. And I'm thinking, you know, those are, those are the big, big boys trading here futures, having all that liquidity sitting on the book. Because I think most retail isn't putting, I don't know, I, I never really put orders on the book, to be honest. I'm normally kind of buying, maybe buy the ask, maybe just sell the ask, uh, buy the bid. And then maybe sell the ask. But normally I'm not sitting here, you know, with uh, 20 or 30 contracts on the book waiting to get filled. So kind of looking at the book map to see like what the, the bigger traders are doing, what the bigger movers are doing, the algorithms, things like that.
But the, I've honest, I haven't really. I've only used Bookmap so far for futures. I know obviously it can be used for crypto and stocks and everything else. So I'm definitely need to kind of dive more into that. But I've definitely kind of found success using Bookmap also with my other indicators and my other charts. You know, I've got multiple charts pulled up on my screen, but I've got book map pretty much like front and center. If I'm in a trade and I'm seeing what's going on, I'm keeping a pretty close eye on that book map to see, you know, are people adding liquidity? Are they taking away liquidity? Like right now, I mean, there's not much going up above us. So we got more support sitting here at the 80s, but guess what? Where did we go? We went from that 87, that 87 level on the, uh, volume profile there from the 87s now down there to the 84s down to the 80s so that volume profile really again is a very powerful tool to kind of get an idea of where those next levels of support resistance are and that's just because that's that's where more orders have been transacted during that session so those little peaks you know that seven that 700 level down to the 95s down doo -doo -doo -doo. Showing us, you know, the more I zoom out here, I can get a better idea as well. We had a lot of overall volume traded there at the 75s overnight. And then we sold down. We got down here at the 700s. We had a lot of volume. I mean, right now we're below that last big spike in volume on that session profile. So you could also use that as kind of a stop, I would say. You know, if you're, if you're trying to get short below that volume profile, well, then... You know, your stop can really kind of be where all that volume is sitting at because you know that there was a lot of orders transacted there. And guess what? We went lower. That's a good way to think about it. You know, when the volume profile is really, there's a lot of volume traded at a certain level and we break below that level. Well, then I'm going to get bearish. If I, you know, if we're going up and we have a lot of volume on the volume profile below us, well, then I'm thinking I'm going to get short. I'm going to get long knowing that there's all that support there. We got about uh, 18 minutes here until Powell speaks, so would expect a better move to happen here after 2 o'clock, 2.30, 3 o'clock, end of day. Could get a big big move here today. Problem is we don't know for sure if it's going to go up, if it's going to go down. We're living in a world today where the market gets good news, the market goes down, we get bad news, the market goes up. It used to be, you know, when numbers came out and the numbers were bad, the market just simply went down. You know, and nowadays it's kind of like this funny thing of like, well, the numbers aren't that bad. Like I've seen the earnings recently where they came out saying like, hey, you know, we lost money, but we didn't lose as much money as we thought we'd lose. And everyone's like, wow, it's amazing. And and it went up. I think Netflix was a really good example of that. Netflix, Netflix came out with their earnings report and they talked about how instead of losing, you know, 2 million subscribers, they only lost like a million subscribers. And everybody was like, oh, well, that's great news. And it ended up rallying like 13%. So kind of funny that's the, the world we're living in today, for sure, with this market. And market's just kind of sitting here, 85s right now. I got that liquidity there. I wouldn't be surprised to see if they kind of run this back up to that 700 level before Powell speaks to get a little pump back up, a little short squeeze. You got to think there's a lot of people that are probably sitting here trying to get short, thinking it's going to crash, especially if you're looking at the charts right now, if you're looking at the three-minute, the five-minute chart. You know, we're below the EMAs, the market's kind of trending lower, but knowing that that news is coming out here at two, kind of gets a little funky, get a little short squeeze. Everyone's trying to get short here going into this news, or they're just basically sitting on their hands. So you get some kind of, sometimes you get these little little pumps and dumps, just because everyone kind of did the, everyone's, if everyone's trying to get short at the same time, well, it's really easy to get a little pump back up, because now everyone's having to get stopped out, or they're chasing it, or they're basically getting squeezed out of their positions. Six eighties holding there. We got that 72 level. That was an area from earlier. That's one thing to look at here as well is like if we're zoomed in really close. Okay, we can see right now 75, 73 level, this 75 to 77s. You know, if I'm really just zoomed in here, I can see that. But I want to think about like, okay, well. Have we tested that level earlier? What was it? What happened earlier when we tested that level? If I go let's zoom out, well, guess what? We tested that level earlier. We bounced, we bounced, we bounced. 
those buyers stayed there, they stayed there, and then we made that move higher. So now I'm like, okay, that's confirmation, 75s, wanting to hold there. And we should feel good knowing that there's that support there. And just kind of bouncing around. You can see right now we're kind of almost, we're right there at that volume profile for the session, that little peak there at the 86s. Can we push back up after that 86 level? You would see the 95 area being that kind of like little peak in the volume profile there. And then after that, I mean, it's pretty much that push back up in that huge area of volume from the 705 to the 710 level there. We got about 14 minutes till two o'clock. But yeah, for me, it's really just uh, been a great tool to use the book map for trading futures. I know you can trade right on the chart as well with book map and do all kinds of cool stuff, but I like to keep it simple. I think my trading strategy is pretty simple when it comes down to it. I try to trade this very, very, very simple strategy. You know, three minute chart is kind of my overall strategy, looking for breakdown, breakup. We're looking for overall just kind of a couple key indicators to line up. And then once I see kind of what's going on with the book map, I can see, you know, little key things like, whoa, you know, there's a lot of liquidity at that level. Well, I feel good. I can short there. You're like, oh, I can buy the dip here because there's a lot of liquidity sitting down here. So definitely an advantage having the book map just over having, you know, the level two. Because if I'm looking at level two, all I see is numbers. I'm just seeing those numbers sitting there. It's not really like a visual representation of what is really going on with those orders that are coming through. And right now, a little bit of pushback up. You can see we've now kind of rotated off of that 86 level. And we'll see if we push up here 95s next on that volume profile. And you can see right there, 91, 92 level, trying to get some push up here. Right there, we had a little push from the 85s. Buyers coming in there. Get rid of basically all that noise. And again, you know, not much going on until about 700 here. So this market, if it, let's say we push over the 90s, I think we go 700s again. There we go, trying to push above 90s now. Let's see if we can get that push all the way up to 700s. Market moving to those areas of liquidity. There's not much going on. You know, we have liquidity there obviously, but the big amount of liquidity is sitting up here, the 700s. That 92, a little bit of resistance right now. Looking to see if we can start to push back up here. Market's gonna grind through this 92s, 95s. Not, not really heavy liquidity. We got the VWAP at the 12, 11 area, 7, 12, 11, 7, 12, uh, 7, 11, 7, 11. And about 12 minutes here, 12 minutes until uh, 2 o'clock. And that's, I think we'll get a better move after 2 o'clock here. But yeah, just uh, kind of seeing it move here. But I definitely would say that if I'm in a trade, you know, I got my eye, got my eyes on the book map. Just kind of looking for things. You know, I want to see if we're pushing up strong. I want to see that volume. You know, obviously we got the volume down here at the bottom. Getting that volume spiking. Getting action, action, action. Push, push, push. And the cool thing is those bubbles really kind of illustrate those bursts in volume. If we get a breakout or a breakdown, you know, we'll get that spike in volume and it's really clear to see like okay we broke through right there at the 90s we had a spike in volume and now we're just kind of still just kind of going sideways here with that news coming out but i think it's just a, a very a different way to look at overall where that market's moving where it's going and giving us information yeah that we're mean, just not look, look at that area in there right there i mean it's just all over the place um, yeah, you know, they're on the bid, they're on the offer, <laughs> you know, 
there's a you know a lot of posturing going on right now uh back and forth and uh like you said there's just there's nothing going on i mean it just keeps on chopping back and forth well it's a, it's a good i mean this is you know great to see because like again you know if i zoom out and all i see is we're just going going sideways it's like okay there's no reason for me to trade i mean at this point if you're trying to get long there's really no reason to get long until we get above 700 because we know from earlier we had all that liquidity there so it's like do I really want to get long here in the 90s just to push the 700 and get denied again? Or would I rather wait to kind of get through that liquidity? And then we know we got the VWAP up there. And then same thing for a short. Like, do I want to get short right here? Probably not. I want to wait, kind of see this, get through that liquidity, that area of just going sideways. And I think that's the hardest part with trading, right? Is you try to, you basically have to figure out, like, is this a good time to trade? Is this a bad time to trade? And that's like half the battle of being, being a trader. Because it's easy. Anyone, you know, you can press that button anytime you want. Buy, sell. No one's going to stop you. But your P&L will definitely show the difference if you're taking bad trades all day or if you're waiting for those good setups. So are you, are you when you get your setup on your three-minute uh, chart... Um, and then you you know you're looking at book map and you're looking at the liquidity and the and the and the volumes start to pick up. Um, are you looking for pullbacks after the volume or um, how is it that uh, you're entering? Normally I'm looking so I, I'm I'm normally trying to like look for breakouts and then like what I'll do is I'll look for you know I like to look at if I see book map is you know we're getting big green bubbles we're getting a lot of volume through these levels like pretty much like for me. You know, if I was looking to get long here and we start to squeeze up and we break through 700 and I see that there's just a lot of volume. And the thing too is like, it's it's gonna go straight up, you know, like that. The cool thing about book map is like, once it, it's going straight up or straight down, like, you know, like, okay, like we're making a move, it's happening right now. So a lot of times, yeah, I'm looking for breakouts and then kind of entering for those moves. And then normally looking for, you know, 10 handles or so for that breakout move, depending on the overall setup and then kind of maybe maybe trailing my stop loss on a few contracts. But the nice thing about the breakout trades, you can always, you know, there's always going to be a pullback to come. So the breakout is a confirmation. And then you kind of wait for that pullback to that. Maybe, you know, you get a pullback to that previous area of resistance turning into support is always a great way to enter. But really, yeah, it's, it's, I wish that the market was moving a little bit more right now because we could talk about it, but when the market's really moving, you can, I mean, book map gets very active. It's very, you know, it's up, it's down. You're seeing those orders come in. You're seeing the big bubbles. You know, it's, it's a lot, a lot of fun, a lot of fun to look at because it really is, you know, it's happening. It's moving. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like you were saying, like with the level two, uh, you know, you can see the liquidity in there and the numbers. But when those numbers change, though, there you don't have any reference to what was there before. So exactly, I mean that exactly that, that exactly. context there of liquidity and and price action and volume, it's all right there. Yeah, and I think you know there's just a huge advantage to being able to see those orders after they go through. You know, even if they don't get filled, it's like, oh wow, look, you know that there was a big buyer. He kept moving the price up. He kept trying to get in. He couldn't get filled. If I'm looking at level two, like I don't really see that because all I see is just, you know, the price moving up and down. I see orders going in and out, but it's not leaving like a history. It's, there's no, there's no trail where, you know, the heat maps showing us like, Hey, look, you know, this guy right there, he tried to get filled, didn't get filled. We got these guys on here. They're just sitting there just going sideways here. Got this guy up here. He tried to get filled, let an order for a second. Nothing happened there. Market didn't move. So it's given us that like almost a little, uh, you know, history of the price action as it's happening. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's always, it's always interesting too, because once the, you know, once the news comes out or data comes out, when the algorithms start moving, I mean, you can just, you can just see the, the pure price action just happening on book map. Just those big, big orders coming through. You get the big bubbles. It's, it's, it gets really visual.
Yeah, now you can see them starting to pull that liquidity before the event, you know? Start, everything's starting to kind of dry up a little bit. Yeah, exactly. And you can see, like, right now we're still sitting, we're pretty much sitting on that volume, you know, that spike, that volume profile area. And we're just kind of, like, ding, 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 not really doing much, just sitting right there. It's almost like that volume spike, volume profile spike right there at the 86s or so is kind of like support right now. And that's kind of, you know, there's buyers sitting there, 85s, 86s. Uh, Nick is asking if you ever use the stops and icebergs indicator with it. I yeah, so I, I have used the iceberg and I've used a stop loss indicator. Um, to be honest, I, I think there's the icebergs are definitely really cool. The stop loss is cool, but I just I kind of the more that I've used Bookmap, I just kind of wanted to get back to really simple, and then kind of add maybe like maybe next week I'll add the icebergs back or maybe I'll add the stop loss the only thing about the stop loss i think like me and bruce talked about before is we don't know for sure like is that if that stop loss order is a you know a buy order stop loss or if it's a you know vice versa is it, is it, is it a short getting stopped out is it someone trying to get long with the stop buy limit order stop loss order so i would say that's the icebergs are definitely really interesting the icebergs have a lot of uh power because i've seen you know i've seen sometimes with the market it's like i'm looking at level two i'm looking at the chart and the market's not moving but then I'm looking over at the at the iceberg order just sitting there getting filled and I'm like, huh. You know, if I didn't know if I didn't see that on the book map, I would just be like, well, I guess we're just not gonna move here. But I look at that iceberg, I'm like, man, that guy's he's absorbing this. He wants this to go higher, you know. He's he's definitely doing something over here. So it's really interesting, especially I think for uh, resistance sometimes. You get these big areas of resistance, you get the iceberg orders, you know, sitting there and you're like the market just keeps tapping, keeps tapping, keeps tapping. And if you're long and you're sitting there and you're like, ah, oh, I don't like that. If I look over the book map and I look and I see there's a big iceberg order just getting, just basically selling into every little push up, I'm like, okay, what do, what do they know that I don't know? So it definitely, I think it's, uh, the iceberg orders definitely have a, a value to them. So now we're pulling back that 86s again, that right to that little peak of that volume session profile but yeah uh, nick there's there's definitely so many so many different indicators and ways that you can modify and tweak book map i know i know bruce has a ton of amazing videos talking about all that stuff and the discord answer questions and stuff I should probably spend a little bit more time kind of diving into it, but I don't know. No, I, I, I really, I mean, like, you know, all this week we've been having these pro trader webinars with uh, options traders. Uh, and um, I, you can see across the board, I mean, really, and, and you're doing the same thing, keeping it very, very simple, um, knowing exactly what you're looking for. Um, and, um, you know, that uh, whatever works for you, uh, and then uh, all these other things like, yeah, maybe, you know, take a look, play around with them, but, you know, see if you, if they work better for you or not, you know, sometimes it's another level of, of complexity that doesn't really give that much insight or maybe it just totally tra changes your way of trading. Exactly. I think that's, that's one way to look at it too, for me, especially with like, even the, you know, having indicators on charts for, you know, candlestick charts and like that. Sometimes you get too many indicators on there and you just get, it's like, there's too much information where like if, if I'm trying to trade and I'm like, Hey, like I have this level, I want to get short at this level and I want to get covered at this level down below. Like all I want to do is only be able to focus on that. And I don't really care about anything happens in between that. I'm looking at those pivots and I'm like, okay, you know, I don't really, if, if something happens between those pivots and it looks crazy for some indicator, I don't really care because I have my strategy and I, have my plan because I'm going to short here, you know, at the 700s and I'm looking for a move to the 80s and I don't care what the candles look like. I don't care what indicator says the RSI or any of that stuff. All I know is that this is my strategy and I want to focus on that. And I think book map, you know, having that just really simple, having all that liquidity on there, it really does. Again, I'm like, Hey, look, you know, if we, if we can't, if we can't get through here, you know, my level for getting covered is down here at the 72s. You know, I don't really care. If there's a million iceberg orders, I don't care if there's a million stop loss orders or what's happening. But all I know is that liquidity's there. I'm short in here. I'm trying to get covered here.
So the algorithm's starting to move the price around here at two o'clock now. And then once Powell starts talking about whatever he's going to talk about, the market should start getting a better move here. Maybe after 2.30 or I'd say three to four. Normally that three to four time, you get some good moves in the market. Volume coming back in there. People are trying to get done for the day. So we'll see. No reaction yet. Patrick, do you ever trade stocks? Yeah, so when I first started trading, I was trading, uh, you know, low float, small, small cap type stuff, type uh, stocks, and and uh, yeah, it's it's a battle. The the thing that I really love about futures is I trade the ES every day. I wake up, I pretty much already know where the levels are. I already know kind of what's going on. I have the idea of what data is coming out that day. You know, I don't have to search for anything. I don't have to use scanners to find what stock's moving. I literally just trade the ES every day. It's almost, it, it's cool because it, it literally like, it becomes like muscle memory where you're like, hey, yesterday, I already know this level balance. I know this happened yesterday. And you just kind of, you just learn how the ES is moving. You know, kind of the overall patterns. And I've, I've just found a lot, a lot more consistency trading futures. Getting that pullback there below that. So I would say now, I mean, now that we've lost that support there at 85s, we're going 70s would be kind of my target here. We retest those lows down there in the 70s now. You can see sellers coming in there aggressive, getting volume spike. We're below that, that peak there in the volume on the session volume profile. Say if we break, if we break below 83 there, that little 83 area, 80s, 75s, just kind of sitting there waiting for it. But definitely going to be some volatility right now with all the algorithms. And you can see the market starting to starting to move now. Problem is, all it takes is Powell to say one. He just has to say one thing, and it moves the market. It can move the market. Massively. So once again, we're at that at that volume profile peak right there, 86s. Will that act as support? You can see kind of just bounce right off that 86 level there. I've definitely noticed that during the nightly sessions with futures that the book map is is pretty spot on because you know during the nighttime you'd have a lot less volume. So if there's if there's a big area of liquidity sitting on the book at during the nightly session. I would say there's, you know, a pretty pretty good chance that the market's going to try to interact at that level. Yeah, it's interesting. The uh, on the overnight sessions, uh, a lot of times, uh, it's, well, like in in markets like the ES, the algorithms are are rather exposed. Uh, you know, you you can see their activity there because uh, there's so much less liquidity, um, and uh, yeah, it's really interesting to see some of the some of the game playing. Yeah, I mean, I've I've seen just massive orders sitting on the liquidity book, and you know, like, oh, we're not going to move that level, and then it's like an hour later, we're there. I'm like, huh, interesting. It's like even it goes against the the trend or whatever. It's just like the market just moves to those levels because again, you know, the market needs liquidity to move. Now we're in between that volume profile. That 86 level is acting as support.
see if we move the 95s here now. It's that next little area. If that turns into resistance, you can see on the on the book right there, the order is sitting there at the 80 at the 95s, 95 support, and then the 87, 85 support there. So again, I mean, we're still just kind of chopping around here. I don't think I don't think Powell has said anything that's really going to move the market yet. Which kind of br brings up a, a question, like, uh, how, how do you do you um, do you trade events, or do you you just kind of wait for the the dust to kind of settle and then and then go with the uh, the trend? Yeah, I mean, normally the, there's an old saying, I guess, in the markets that you know the first move is the fake out, and then the the real move is the second move. So normally I'll try, you know, if it, I'll try to look for a key level, maybe using book map, you know, if we're having data come out, you know, let's say we're having like. Um, you know, CPI never comes out and we have a bunch of liquidity sitting down in the 75s. I might look for that 75 level to get tested first and then kind of see like, do we balance off that 75s? And if we balance off 75s, then maybe I'll get long, you know, looking to see that liquidity. Cause a lot of times, you know, those big players are going to put those orders out there kind of sitting there, maybe trying to buy the dip or trying to short the top. And, you know, I'd say at the end of the day, if I'm trading three contracts, I want to be on the side of whoever's trading hundreds of contracts. And there's that push up now to that 95s. You can see spiking in volume. That liquidity take, getting taken out there, but just not getting all the way through it. So that 95, it's interesting because that 95 is now that peak and that volume profile kind of spike in there. And we got that liquidity sitting there at the 88s. Kind of uneventful so far. I don't even know if where Powell is speaking out or how he's speaking, but I guess he's live right now on CNBC. Just says Federal Reserve Board talk post pandemic economy. Yes, yeah, so they're talking right now. So you take, you know, a 5% shortage, 6% shortage, I mean, it's going to be significant. As a re result, the cost of labor has increased significantly for every one of the supply chain. With the supply of labor down, competition for drivers heated up. I mean, yeah, so I think they're just basically going to, the whole, the Fed, the board is sitting there talking about all the different indicators and numbers and supply chains and everything. So the problem now is all it takes is one of them to say a word that the algorithms don't like and the market sells off, or they say a stat that the algorithms do like and the market goes up. It's definitely not retail traders sitting there listening. It's the computer algorithms. They hear one little keyword and it's sell, sell, sell. What uh, what's the volume dot setting you have on uh, on on yours? It's uh, just kind of curious. Um, I guess it's like right right there in the middle. No, no, uh, not 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 the size, but uh, go go to right click on a uh, volume dot and then go to uh, settings. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. Oh, I guess we can't see it because you're not you're sharing just the app, right? Oh yeah, yeah. That, that's so fine. It's, it's it says volume display options, 3D bubbles, and then it goes uh, volume delta buy minus sell, mm -hmm. not total volume. And then um, I guess smart is the clustering. Yeah. And then what about for minimum uh, uh, trade size and? Uh, uh, none. Uh, only, and yeah, minimum minimal display. displayed volume is one, and then minimal trade size is one. Oh, okay. All right. So these are just the default settings. 
Yeah. yeah. Would you Would you suggest? Oh, uh, oh no, no, uh, yeah, that, that's fine. Um, it just yeah. um, we're just seeing some pretty pretty big delta changes right now. I mean, it, you know, they'll they'll kind of blow up like like that and 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 be green, and then all of a sudden, like, you know, it kind of other trades happen, and then like the overall aggregate will be red or something like that. Yeah. So, uh, just a lot of quick volume back and forth right now. That's all. Yeah. Look where we're at. We're selling down below the eighty six again, though. Can we go to the seventies? Can we go seventies here? I think we're going 70s. I think we're going 70s here. There's not much going on now that the 80s. I think we're 75s will be getting tested here next. <laughs> there we go. 78s, 75s sitting down there. There's 75, 70 liquidity sitting there. Seventy-five. Let's see that seventy-five gets taken out here. Goes seventies. After that, I mean, fifty-fives, sixty-fives being kind of a next target. But again, like right now, if if I'm in a short, you know, if I'm sh let's say I shorted from the nineties, I mean, I'm sitting here just looking for that seventy level, that liquidity. I'm like, hey, I want to see I get tested. And there's not much going on above us. There we go. I think we're going 70s. Let's see it. 75s. What's interesting is, I mean, you literally, that that peak in the volume session profile at that 95 level, I mean, that was right kind of where we pushed up to. And there we go, 73s now. Would expect some type of Sometimes a little bounce around down here at the 70s, that buyer sitting there right now. But after that, I mean, there is not much till 55s. So if we break 70 strong here, I would say 55 is definitely in the picture. That's a nice little move off the 90s though. From 94 to 74, 20 handles on a futures. Not a not a bad uh, not a bad trade there. And really, like sometimes, you know, I'll just if let's say the market's selling, 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 and we've got a lot of volatility and we're showing strength in terms of selling off. If this 70 level breaks, I could basically enter a trade for 70 to break and then look to ride the momentum lower. Right now, you can see 74 bounce in there. And do, 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 do. Will she get taken out? This is, I mean, the chart's looking very bearish right now. And book map definitely telling me, hey, if that 70 level can't hold there, we're going lower. Let's see right here. I want to see a, I want to see a big red bubble, big old red bubble there. Get through that level. 71, 70s. Can we get it?
There they go. They're going to test it. They're going to test it. And there you go. She's going. She's going through it. They're selling in the 70s hard right now. Some, some people covering. I'm thinking some shorts just ended up covering right there. That's why that little spike in volume. They got scared. You also got to think there are people that short of the 90s. They're covering at the 70s now for 20 handles. Can't complain about getting 20 handles. So again, I think you just wait for this to break 70s and then we look for a move down to the 50s, 55s. Market's down 2.6% on the day. I think there's still room to go here. Obviously, with Powell speaking, a little dangerous. Not the... They're laughing. They're over there laughing right now. The feds. Tomato shortage. Who would have known? That buyer is sitting there. About 420 contracts sitting there at that 70 level right now. Will they take it out? Again, remember the old saying, like I said earlier, sellers don't want to sell low. They want to sell high. So maybe this pushes back up, gets some more momentum to get through that 70 level. Kind of sucker some more longs in here and then crack it. If anyone had any more questions in the on the chat on the live stream, let me know. I think that's pretty much all she wrote for the day, at least for now. But definitely, I mean, this is like if I'm gonna let's let's say you're short from the '90s, you know, I'm leaving a runner on. I'm leaving a runner on for sure. I'm covering down here into the '70s. I'm gonna leave a couple runners on there, and I'm looking for a move down 55s here end of day. And the nice thing is that I just basically, once, if we break through 70s here, and then we look for that next area of liquidity turning into resistance, and then I just put my stop right above that and just keep moving my stop down based on where those areas of liquidity are. Yeah, how, how often will you, will you, or how long do you usually stay uh, in, a, in a trade? Um, I think my average trade is like less than 10 minutes. <laughs> But it depends. Um, I had one other night for like four hours. I just left a runner going. You know, if the, if the market's trending, there's no reason to cover, you know, um, at least on a runner. You kind of just move your stop down. But I think, you know, in, in general, pretty, pretty, pretty quick in and out, especially with futures. If you're trading, you know, three or four contracts, I mean, you can make $1,000 in five seconds. Also lose $1,000, I guess I should say. As quickly as you can make it, you can lose it even faster. There we go. Through the 70s now. Down 69s. I'm thinking we go 55s today. Looking at the charts here. I mean, this is... We're right at a support level, that 70s. But if we keep going lower, this is not looking good. And the Fed and his buddies are not going to... I don't think they're going to say anything that's going to be good for the market today. I'd yeah. say 38. I mean, 38 is doable today, honestly. On the daily chart. They won't be laughing then. I, I do I do love when the when the Fed and people they talk about like I heard some talking about like, oh I I don't even I haven't experienced inflation. I'm like, yeah, well when you have millions of dollars, it's a little different. But when you're only making a couple hundred dollars a day and you live you got a family, you got bills, you know, when you gotta pay twenty percent more for your food at the grocery store, you're you're experiencing inflation.
different pers different perspective, I guess. <laughs> Inflation is not uh inflation is not transitionary. It's it's real. So I think I, I think I said I think we were when we were at the nineties, we were looking at that seventy level on the book map, and there we are, sixty nines now. It, I would be you know what'd be interesting is if I if I just didn't trade, only traded off of the book map, just got rid of candlesticks and, and everything and only traded off the book map, that would be an interesting experiment. Because I do feel like sometimes the candlesticks, they can just, you know, you get these weird candlesticks that they think you like, oh, I'm going to get out because there's a, it pushed back up. It's got a wick, you know, the, oh, look at that wick on the bottom. Oh, look at this. And then you end up getting out, you know because of a candlestick, where if you're looking at a book map and all you're looking at these levels, I mean, from the 90s to the 70s, that was a beautiful trade. Somebody asked, do I have a live trading room? No live trading room. Well, I do live streams every morning on YouTube, 9.30 a.m. Eastern. If you guys want to hit up um, that on YouTube, it'll be live pretty much every morning, showing the book map, going over my trades, showing the entries and all that fun stuff. So you can just check out my YouTube channel, at Patrick Whelan. Be live uh, there at 9.30 using the book map and all that fun stuff. So I'm actually going to put up a video later on today showing the actual trade that I made for that breakdown below 700 and how I was using the book map during the trade to stay in the trade, how I had confidence. I was pretty much sitting there going, hey, this is going to the 80s, this is going to the 80s. And I had all that confidence because of the book map showing me kind of where that heat's at, where the action's at. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Patrick. No, I, I put uh, your all of your contact or your YouTube channel uh, into the chat there uh, and, awesome. uh, and special offer as well. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, re really appreciate it. Uh, um, you know, anytime you need any help with anything or you want to trade from the chart or whatever, hit me up. Um, you know, ha happy to help you out uh, with, with anything. Um, and... Uh, uh, yeah, sorry that uh, you know we didn't really have much too much too much action to to uh, to go over today, um, but uh, uh, yeah, the funny thing is is we'll probably stop the webinar and like everything's gonna pick up here. But uh, probably yeah, that's that's that. Really, every time I stop live streaming, the market moves. It's people always joke about it. They're like, hey, can you just stop the live stream so the market will move? <laughs> Literally today, same thing happened. I was like, all right, I'm over it. I'm gonna walk away. And the minute that I said that, the market just started tanking. It's it's always so funny. Yeah, you're there for yeah, all think, the hard work, and then uh, and then the easy move happens, and like, uh, oh man. Yeah, I know it's always something, but yeah, thanks for having me on, Bruce. Uh, it's been been a pleasure, and I uh, look forward to doing some more of these, and we'll keep. I'll keep. Uh, I mean, the cool thing is, I'm only. I feel like the more and more I use Bookmap, I'm just gonna be able to get it more and more dialed in, and really kind of get it going. Give me a couple months. We're gonna be just making moves. Yeah, I love it. I mean, uh, I, I love the uh, kind of clarity and simplicity. Um, you know, you know exactly what you're looking at. Uh, and um, uh, even though you haven't been using it for very long at all, um, and uh, you've already integrated it um, uh, really nicely into your into your trading. That's yeah, that's the cool thing about it is that, you know, I think at the end of the day, the book map is we've all used, you know, liquidity in the sense that we're looking at level two, like everyone understands like, oh, we look at level two kind of, oh, look, there's buyers there, there's there. But really what Bookmap is doing is just illustrating it, you know, in a different way. And it's giving, you know, humans, you know, we're looking at these charts and looking at numbers going up and down, you know, you're like, oh, like it just doesn't calculate. But if you look at a heat map, you're like, oh, look, red, you know, that means there's a lot of stuff going on there. Like those colors, it's like a vis very visual thing. And you can obviously adjust all those colors, but I think it really does give you an advantage to uh, have it all visually displayed. And I think I, I think I might go uh, try to catch some waves today. Actually, it's a beautiful sunny day, and uh, might just call it right there. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, we'll look for the market move now. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. All right. Well, uh, uh, yeah. Thanks so much, Patrick. Uh, yeah, we'll definitely do it again, uh, and um, uh, maybe uh, we'll figure out a better time slot for you. 
um, or uh, a day where um, oh, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe maybe uh, we'll do a Q and A if you want me to do a Q and A over on your side uh, as well. Whatever. Uh, but uh, I'd love to do more stuff with you. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, let's. I honestly, I didn't even. I didn't know that Powell was. They were speaking today, so that's when we scheduled it. I had. I was like, oh, we'll be. It'll be a good time to schedule it. So, we'll uh, we'll have another opportunity for sure. Yeah, we'll figure something out and uh, we'll we'll make it happen. Awesome. Thanks, Bruce. All right. Thank you Thanks very much, Patrick. Thanks for tuning in. All right. Yeah. Take care. Bye bye.